All right, got a MRVA 17 millimeters on banjo bolts for your cooler lines. Ten millimeters on the linear saw. I keep uh, most of these um, like this one. I keep the bolts with the solenoids so I don't have to search for them. I mean, I could figure out which ones are what, but just to make it quicker, I just keep everything with them. Same up here. This is a 10 millimeters for this linear solenoid. And these solenoids on this transmission are not cheap at all, so you want to be very careful. Alright, now, why you have that like that? That you don't uh, break the solenoids. pressure sensors and you want to mark which ones come out of where so just pick one and make a mark on it they are different colors and some are stepped and some are not stepped like this one here is not stepped this one here is I'll show you the difference all our different pressures that they work at so you you don't want to mix them up or you're going to get codes and you want to make sure you put the right one back on when you get one if you got to replace it you notice how that one's got a step on it. This one does not. Ten millimeters on the back cover. Switch it come off. Alright, I think that's all. Uh, 10 millimeters on your cover over here for your solenoids on your inside. Should have kept that bolt, but oh well. I keep these bolts with the cover too or just separated so I know that they go to it and again it's only for speed purposes we'll get all the measurements for all these bolts in a little bit when we build it Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get these bell bolts off so I can flip this up. 14 millimeters on the case bolts. Pay attention to where your brackets go. Or take pictures of it.
We got a 10 millimeter that holds a, a wiring harness into the case. You leave the solenoids on there. There's another 14 millimeter. Now, you can take a picture of it. Or you can just I just write it on the case, the order in which these wires are. So I'm going to go green, orange, red, white. And brown goes with brown, black goes with black. Go ahead and take our harness out. Like I said, just leave the solenoids on there. I'm going to take our end cover off. Careful, don't bend your pipes. There's a feed pipe in here. You want to pull that out. There's a feed pipe right here in the front. You want to pull that out. And go ahead and take this bearing off. Take our park mechanism off. There's a little tab that bends over and locks this bolt in place. You want to bend that up. It's a 10 millimeter. Move your linkage all the way forward. Your locking bolt and your bolt. Pay attention to how your spring and actuator assembly was. There's a little roll pin in this linkage right here. You're going to line that up with the notch that's in the case. Right, I think these are inch and five sixteenths. Yep. And let me remember, I think this one's right-handed threads, I think the rest are left. Alright. We've got washers under each of these. This one here we're just going to leave in the case. Take a hammer straight as you can, you don't want to screw the threads up. You want to kind of loosen those up best you can. You can get pullers if you want to to pull these off of there. For me, the easiest way is I got these adjustable ladies' feet and uh, 
I just print them off. Same goes for the gear here. Now you do got to be careful if you don't chip it. If you do chip it, it's not that big of a deal. I can show you how to fix it. So I get a screwdriver, get it started, and just broke my screwdriver. Usually it don't does not do that. It's wanting to be difficult because we're on camera. This up underneath there. We did not chip this one. I didn't hear it chip anyway. Usually you hear it. And I don't see anything chipped. So what I do, I get my little angle grinder, get a scotch bright pad. And as long as your chip does not exceed half of the distance right here, you can grind part of this gear off and it won't matter at all so what i'll do is it'll be right chipped right down here on the tip and i'll just get in there and i'll buzz this until that is uh, smooth and you're good to go you don't have to worry about it all right Actually, could have left that nut on there. I forgot. We got a here's a a, a spreadable clip on this bearing up here. We're gonna have to loosen that. And the bearing is gonna stay. And go ahead and loosen this case a little bit. Let me just spot to. Hit on, and pry on. We got a spot right down here that we can get. And a spot right here. snap ring spread there we go it dropped now our case should come off here we go up here uh, little dowel pins will come out of the case go ahead and take them out check your bearings Check your races for your diff. Make sure that they're not pitted. And here's your other one. It's stuck in the case. It's not that big of a deal. If they don't want to come out. Don't try to force them out. It's okay that they stay in there. You don't want to booger them up too much. Trying to get them. So, pull this up where we can get to it. We got another locking tab.
10 millimeter. It's got a, both of those bolts that I showed you have this have a little shoulder on them. So we're gonna pull this off. Pay attention to right in here where the slider goes onto it. You pay attention to the teeth on here. If this is boogered up, you're going to replace that slider. Pay attention to the slider. It has a certain way that goes. You can see this large lip is facing down. This color. This one's easier to notice, but most Hondas, it's uh, kind of difficult to know which way it goes. This one's easier. And stick that on there. And then pay attention to your teeth here also. And me personally, I use these zip ties. It just uh, speeds things up tremendously. And I've been using these same zip ties for at least 10 years now. So I reuse them. Uh, if they start getting wore out where they don't want to hold, just take that tab right there and you bend that tab up and they'll keep on rocking. Put the collar in there. Put this in there. And then I pull it, all this out so that it gets washed. So I don't have to worry about things not getting in there properly. So I may have to go get another person. This is easier to uh, do with two people. Sometimes you can finagle it, but I'm gonna go get somebody. I'll be back. Put the zip kit in it. Yeah, I went ahead and put a new pressure switch kit in it. So we'll give that a shot. See what happens. All right. Most of these, uh, all this stuff is usually good. You still want to check it out. You want to check all your teeth out and make sure that they're, they're in good shape. I'll just take this off of the main shaft. Make sure up here is good. No pitting anywhere the bearings ride. Like I say, usually all this is in good shape. Set my drum off to the side. Go ahead and put this back in the case. Make it easier to work with. And go ahead and pry that bearing off of there. this again. Alright, come on. Not going 
gonna get in there. All right, we'll try it with two screwdrivers. There we go. Now I'll take the air hammer and drive that off. I'm going to use a bit like that. Try very hard not to screw up the threads. Not even a bad idea to put a nut back on it. about time for a new air hammer okay went a little too far Flat bearing and washer, inner bearing, and another flat washer or bearing. And on the back right here, we got a snap ring. A little bit stiff. There we go. Drum. And we got a washer, flat bearing, cage bearing, flat bearing. Again, you just want to make sure none of that's got any pits on it anywhere. And our teeth all look good and it all looks good. differential out. Bearing sliding off very easy. And look real close at these and make sure they're not all pitted up. This one's not near as bad as some Hondas are about dip bearings. Alright, these tubes right here are horribly bad about cracking. And uh, this is there's an update form. You always want to put the updated tubes inside it. 
Most all these bolts are going to be 10 millimeters, except for three 12s that are going to be down here. And I say what that happens is this tube down here starts pushing up against this tube right here and it'll just break it. It's usually broken over in, in here. And the updated one has a bracket that holds this one down as well as this one. pins, dowel pins in each layer, two of them. Pull out our stator. You got a spring and a plunger right here. Pay attention to which way the plungers go on different models or different. This one is facing down. It'll fall out when you take this part, so. And filter bolt. Take our spring off of our detent. Just pop it around this little notch right here. Bring that around. This will allow this to come out. Go ahead and take that off. Separator plate on each level, too. Right. And this will come off. You want to pay attention to this area right in here where this gear rides, that's where it's going to wear out. Pump gears, line usually always faces down. This dowel pin is in staying in case, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. The only other thing that's on these cases that you need to worry about is there's a sleeve that goes underneath this bearing right here. And it's got this hold down bolt, bolt so we're going to uh, bend the tab down, take the bolt out, and take the keeper out. And we're going to, I'm going to put this in the hot wash machine and I'm gonna face it down. And a lot of times if it gets hot enough and the vib vibration is enough that this bearing will fall out. And that's what we're hoping for. Otherwise, this is a pain to get out of there and they do have a problem with them cracking uh, but it's not that common so if, if the bearing does not fall out on its own i don't worry about the two o-rings that are on here and changing them because it is such a pain to get out of there and you're probably going to ruin it trying to get it out and you may even screw up your bearing it is difficult to get out of there so I'm going to bend that down, take the keeper out. Now 
take our drums apart. Alright, just for ease, I mark my drums. That way, I can just take it all apart, wash it all at one time. I don't have to do all this by hand, so this one was on the bottom. I just put it E for end. So I, I know. Then I'm going to mark my pistons so I know it goes with that drum. And I'll mark my pressure plate so I know it goes with that drum. Pay attention to how your cushion plates are on these things. Some of these have just a wavy wire which these have. Uh, some Hondas have a dished plate or a dished uh, spring down here. So you're going to want to pay attention to how it was facing and put it back in the way it was facing. snap ring that holds it all together with that set of clutches. Some of them are different. Alright. And we're going to go ahead and mark our piston in case this all comes apart. Some kits come with the balance pistons, some don't, so if you want them you need to make sure and order them. Alright, don't have to worry about marking this drum because this is the only other drum on that shaft and that looks like this. So I'm going to know that this stuff goes with that because it's the only other one with a balance piston. This drum is the only one that is double sided. So I'm just going to mark one side, I mark it with an X. Mark everything on this side with an X. Your clutches are coming apart. one I just uh, put it all together. You know, 
this all goes to that drum. It's not so much a big issue on this one because it only has one double sided drum, some Hondas have two. It's just a habit I've gotten into. Uh, so at this point we're going to write this thing up and uh, get it sold and then we'll do the rebuild video. Alright, doing an LS kit with pistons, filter, updated tubes, and a torque converter. On your converter, on the hub side, it goes into the tranny. There will either be an ink stamp, which mine had an ink stamp this time. It's PP. And uh, sometimes it's, it's stamped in with a metal stamp. Uh, so, just look for that and it'll help them identify which torque converter that you need.